What is going on guys? In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the DynamoDB batch get item API. I'm also going to show you how to use it uh, with a JavaScript example on Node.js using the AWS SDK. Um, so just very quickly, let's just go over what batch get item does, allows you to do, why it's useful, that kind of stuff. Uh, so it essentially just allows you to get multiple items all at once in one operation. And what's neat is that you can al also get um, items from multiple different tables all at once. Um, so the limits are not to one particular table, they're shared across many. Um, so just going through the documentation here, you have a limit so you can only retrieve up to 16 megabytes of data at once. Um, which can contain as many of a, as a hundred items. So they have a neat little example here. So if you ask to retrieve a hundred, but each item is 300 kilobytes, then you'll only get back 52. And the remaining 48 will be, um, the keys will be provided to you in the unprocessed keys array uh, so that you can perform a next call to get those items. Um, they also have some details here about um, provision capacity. So just be aware that using batch APIs do use quite a bit of provision capacity. So you may need to be careful about your limits here. Also be careful about the costs. Uh, let's go down here a little bit more. Um, so yeah, it doesn't return items in any particular order. Um, do, 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 do. So you can also provide the projection expression so that you can limit the attributes that you're querying or attributes that you're retrieving as part of your query if that's useful in your example. Uh, so that's what this is for. Let's go and take a look at how to use it um, using a Node.js example. So let's check this out. Uh, so here's the code example. Um, so what are we doing here? So we're saying AWS, we're requiring the SDK, uh, we're setting our region, we're creating a DynamoDB client essentially. And here is where we're actually providing the parameters for our request. Uh, so we specify in the request items object, the table name. Um, so you can have multiple different queries here on multiple different tables. So at the same level, you can provide a different table name and just basically repeat everything that's inside here. Um, so inside the keys um, list, you provide each of the keys that you'd like to retrieve. Um, so in my example, my key name is called transaction ID. So I would swap this out with transaction ID. And then you see here they have N, N stands for number. Um, so depending on whether or not your key is a number type or a string type, you may need to swap this out. So for my example, my key is stored as a string. So I would put S here as opposed to N. And then um, for the value, I would say like whatever your transaction ID value is, maybe one, two, three uh, as the key ID. And then you can see here, you just provide a list. So multiple other ones here. Um, so you can get multiple at once. And then this is an optional field, the projection expression. If you only want a subset of the columns on this um, row, you can say, I only want, you know, column one, two, three, whatever uh, it may be in your example. And then if we go down to actually calling this thing, uh, so we just say ddb.batchgetItem, you give it the params, which we specified up here. Also give it a callback function. Um, then you can basically say if, if it's an error, then you enter this loop uh, or this statement. And if it's not an error, then you just uh, kind of process the response. So we look inside the data object, inside the responses key, inside the table name key, and that'll be a list of rows that you retrieve from your table. And then he's just doing a uh, for each here and you're just console logging out each of the items. Uh, so hopefully this explained to you kind of what batch credit item does and how it works. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe uh, so you don't miss out on my next one. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.